In this video, we'll discuss medications that support hemodynamics, blood pressure, and heart rate. These medications include vasopressors, which cause peripheral vasoconstriction to elevate blood pressure, as well as ionotropes, which increase the contractility of the heart. Many drugs we'll discuss today have both types of properties, so the line between them can get blurry. These medications are important to know about because they are used commonly in the intensive care units and operating rooms. One easy way to remember these drugs is to divide them into three categories, vasopressors, ionoconstrictors, and ionodilators, which we'll only briefly discuss here. Let's take one at a time. Vasopressors are drugs that constrict the peripheral vascular system and therefore support blood pressure. Commonly used pressors include phenylephrine, commonly referred to by its trade name neosinephrine, or neo for short, which acts by only stimulating alpha-1 receptors, which are located on peripheral arterioles as well as on the pulmonary vascular system, and therefore increase peripheral vasoconstriction, leading to an increase in blood pressure and an increase in pulmonary vascular resistance. It does not affect the heart directly, but you can often see a reflex bradycardia, so it is a good choice in patients with tachycardia and when we want to avoid cardiac stimulation. Keep in mind that this increases afterload, and therefore phenylephrine will probably decrease cardiac output, especially for people in heart failure. Next is norepinephrine, otherwise known as levofed, or levo for short, which acts primarily on alpha-1 receptors, but also has some beta-1 effects at higher doses. Clinically, the alpha usually outweighs the beta, so BP effects from peripheral vasoconstriction predominate over cardiac effects. In fact, heart rate is often unchanged and may even decrease because of a reflex bradycardia in response to the increased blood pressure, but this effect is clinically variable. At higher doses, the beta-1 effect can come into play, increasing cardiac contractility and hence cardiac output and heart rate. It is the preferred vasopressor in septic shock because of preserved renal blood flow. It is the only vasopressor that has been shown to have a positive effect on mortality in septic shock, and thus you will see it used often in ICUs. Next is vasopressin. You may be familiar with vasopressin and its role in diabetes insipidus, but it also has a role as a vasopressor where it acts on peripheral V1 receptors located on systemic arterioles to cause peripheral vasoconstriction. There are no V1 receptors located on the pulmonary vascular system, and thus it is a great presser of choice for people with pulmonary hypertension. In practice, vaso is often used as a second presser to augment the adrenergic response. Next are the ionoconstrictors, which are drugs with both positive ionotropic effects and vasopressor effects. The first is epinephrine, which is a potent activator of alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2 receptors. At low doses, epinephrine has primary beta effects, causing an increase in con cardiac contractility, heart rate, bronchodilation, and a decrease in systemic vascular resistance. As the dose goes up, you see more alpha-1 effect and get an increase in systemic vascular resistance. Because of the strong beta effects, it is prone to cause arrhythmias and is therefore usually reserved for patients failing other drugs. Epinephrine is the drug of choice in allergic reactions because it not only supports hemodynamics and acts as a potent bronchodilator, but it also stabilizes the mast cell membrane, decreasing further degranulation and histamine release. Next up is dopamine. According to textbooks, Dopamine's actions are dose-dependent. At low doses, it acts on dopamine receptors in the renal and splanchnic circulations. Moderate doses stimulate beta receptors, leading to increased heart rate and contractility. At high doses, alpha receptors begin to be activated as well and lead to systemic vasoconstriction. With this alpha action, cardiac afterload is increased, which counteracts the increase in cardiac output related to beta stimulation. While the textbooks often emphasize these dose-dependent actions, many critical care physicians feel that in reality things are less clear-cut. 
Think of these doses as more of a starting point for titration than as a hard and fast rule. Finally, we have the ionodilators, which are positive ionotropes with vasodilatory properties. This class of drugs include dobutamine, which acts as a strong beta-1 agonist, making it useful to augment heart rate and contractility. It also has some beta-2 properties, leading to peripheral dilation. In practice, changes in cardiac output and vasodilation often counteract each other, so blood pressure doesn't change much. Of note, it increases cardiac O2 consumption, so it can be troublesome in truly ischemic or failing heart muscle. Milrinone acts to support ionotropy, or contractility, as a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Milrinone increases available intracellular calcium in the cardiac myocyte and therefore increases contractility. It is useful because unlike dobutamine, it usually does not increase O2 consumption. Also, since it doesn't act on beta receptors, it is useful to increase contractility in patients who are on beta blockers. We've reviewed a great deal of information here, so let's summarize. There are three classes of medications that are used to support hemodynamics. These are vasopressors, ionoconstrictors, and ionodilators. Each have an important role in critical care. Some useful tips to remember are norepinephrine is preferred in sepsis, Epinephrine should be reserved for otherwise refractory patients because of arrhythmogenic potential. And finally, vasopressin is a good adjunct. Thank you for watching.